These artifacts date from pre-Columbian times. The public entrance to the gallery. Why was he so interested in old weapons? The man transformed an entire wing of his manor into an art gallery. These artifacts date from pre-Columbian times. Yeah, maybe I can use this dagger.
what's the matter with you? You sure you won't be needing that hand? You're losing it, detective. At this rate, you're right. The bottle will get you before I do. You didn't see anything. I saw you within an inch of putting a dagger through your forearm. Did I miss something more interesting? Sanders was right. This painting is cursed. What are you talking about? I was attacked by a creature. I pushed it back, I think. I... I think so too. You knew. You knew about the beast. What are you talking about? Think yourself lucky that I saved your hand, even if it was to save my goods. You mean me? Don't flatter yourself, sweetheart. I'm talking about the contents of this gallery. And by the way, where do you think you're going with that dagger? It saved my life. It's an extraordinary dagger. You should talk to Algernon Drake. He's an antique dealer here on Darkwater. He'll tell you all about it, from what I saw in the ledgers. It was him who sold it to Sanders. The creature. This dagger was the only weapon capable of pushing it back. If Hawkins was trying to get rid of this shambler, she might have made contact with Drake. This antique dealer has a good knowledge of the occult. I have nothing to lose by meeting him. You've got your spunk back. Go where you want. I'm staying here to talk business with Irene. Where is the bookseller? Freud's The Interpretation of Dreams. It's the work that laid the foundations of psychoanalysis at the beginning of this century. An old diary.
what happened here. Let's start over. Where did they break in from? Blood. Seems like amateur work. Someone tall left this footprint. A man, probably. This burglar seems to be rather clumsy. What sort of thief leaves his tools at the crime scene? What killed all these animals? What happened that made the burglar flee before finishing his work? What the... Charles Hawkins? Looks like the symbol rejected Hawkins. Where did I see it? What sort of power did Sarah Hawkins' painting possess? Sarah Hawkins helped hide something in this safe. They put in a great deal of effort to hide whatever is in here. Everything is linked to the Sarah Hawkins case. Strange amulet. I have a feeling I'd better not touch it. Is everyone on this island taking sleeping pills? What link did he find between Charles Hawkins and an old amulet? Drake left instructions on how to find the combination of his safe.
Arkham editions? Never heard of them. How many volumes are there in this collection? Another volume by Arkham Editions. Arkham Editions? Never heard of them. How many volumes are there in this collection? Another volume by Arkham Editions. Arkham Editions? Never heard of them. How many volumes are there in this collection? Things are not looking good. A kind of chalice. Cylinders that Drake tried to hide. I should perhaps listen to them. What does this strange book contain? This book contains unholy knowledge. The Book of Zion is the foundational work behind Helena Blavatsky's Theosophical Movement. Its followers place truth on the same footing as a religion.
And these red rocks, like precious stones, lie fixed, set in divine gold. To be the guardian of the grail does not protect me from its attractions, Henry. And I do confess it. I am willing to pay to know its secrets. I finally understood that we were only pieces on the chessboard of the gods. Let those of us who are still standing protect our white queen from their dark soldiers. I see our number dwindling, and my will strengthens as my apprehension grows. We shall refuse to be the playthings of destiny. Dear friend, I thank you again for the anthology of the works of Arkham editions that you sent me. Uh, volume 9, Azathoth and Other Horrors, seemed particularly relevant to my research. I never tire of browsing through them. I finally understood that we were only pieces on the chessboard of the gods. Let those of us who are still standing protect our white queen from their dark soldiers. I see our number dwindling, and my will strengthens as my apprehension grows. We shall refuse to be the playthings of destiny. Red rocks, like precious stones, lie fixed, set in divine gold. To be the guardian of the grail does not protect me from its attractions, Henry. And I do confess it. I am willing to pay to... The Chalice of Knowledge. know its secrets. Drake talked about a particular volume. So these are the volumes that Drake was talking about in his... What did Drake say about this collection? Drake talked about a particular volume. So these are the volumes that Drake was talking about in his message. What did Drake say about this collection? Drake talked about a particular volume. So these are the volumes that Drake was talking about in his message. What did Drake say about this collection?
friend. I thank you again for the anthology of the works of Arkham editions that you sent me. Uh, volume 9, Azathoth and Other Horrors, seemed particularly relevant to my research. I never tire of browsing through them. Drake talked about a particular volume. So these are the volumes that Drake was talking about in his... What did Drake say about this collection? Drake talked about a particular volume. So these are the volumes that Drake was talking about in his message. What did Drake say about this collection? Drake talked about a particular volume. So these are the volumes that Drake was talking about in his message. What did Drake say about this collection? Drake talked about a particular volume.
This man's condition is deteriorating. What says Dr. Fuller? It's his patient, after all. He... he's busy with Captain Fitzroy. He specifically asked us not to bother him when that's the case. Oh, of course. I'll see what I can do. Mr. Blake, can you hear me? I'm Dr. Colden. We'll take care of you. There's nothing we can do. I tried talking to him. He's catatonic. Very well. I'll examine him. Thirty-year-old subject. Severe hypothermia. Erythematous papules around the eyes and eardrums. Necrosed palupral tissue. Lord, this smell. His skin shows abnormal loss of color and seems dried out. He's totally dehydrated. His fingertips and toes seem to feature a slight ring under the skin. Tender at the touch. Slightly sticky. Severe malnutrition. Swollen abdomen with traces of petechia. <sighs> Doesn't seem like an edema. Slight protuberances seem to indicate the presence of a foreign body. So, Doctor, an opinion? I'm not sure I have the necessary knowledge to treat this man. Don't say that. You're our most worthy doctor, after Dr. Fuller. Some of his symptoms are beyond my comprehension. What did you find? Did you examine his abdomen? It would seem there's something inside. He hasn't eaten in days. Are you certain it's not an edema? No. Can't you recognize an edema? Pushing with your finger won't leave a trace. And look at these bumps. <laughs> it's not like he could be pregnant. Whatever it is, this man has something inside him that shouldn't be there. We should operate on him at once. Dr. Fuller said not to worry, that the edema would go away by itself. You know, I'm not sure Dr. Fuller is telling the truth. In spite of the muscle contractions, his arms seem limp. Yes. They can't have decalcified, not at this rate. And yet, if there is a bone in this arm, it's softer than that of a newborn baby. What about his cranium? It's soft at the touch. It does seem like the skull of a baby. Look at these sticky rings growing at his fingertips. What can be happening? I'm sure you'll find an explanation. You have to. I see signs of hypodermoclysis, but he's still dehydrated. When was his last IV? He's constantly under perfusion. I've even gone beyond the recommended dose to no avail. And you won't believe me, but... When we bathed him earlier... He seemed to feel better? Yes. Like he needs an aquarium, not a perfusion. But that doesn't explain his condition. I almost don't believe it myself, but these symptoms are not those usually associated with the human species. What do you mean? Don't tell me you believe in extraterrestrials. No. This poor man is from our world, all right. But his body is undergoing unnatural mutations. And this transformation is killing him. His body simply can't cope. Where could he have gotten such an infection? I pray that it's not here. Dr. Colden, may I know what you're doing to my patient? What I'm doing? How about what you've done to him? Let us calm down, my dear Marie. I don't appreciate your tone, nor your insinuations. I've done to him what I do to all my patients provide him with the best available care. Your imagination is without limit. It's your homemade drug again, is it not? Those people are not your guinea pigs. 
There, there. What have you seen to put you in such a state? I've seen suction cups on his fingers, his falling body temperature, his dehydration. Had I only read the report, you know what I would have concluded, Doctor. Do I? Tell me anyway. I'm curious. He's no longer human. These are the attributes of... an animal. Fascinating. An animal, you say? Could you be more precise? Cephalopod, perhaps. <laughs> this amuses you. Your reaction does. I know your thirst for knowledge, Doctor. It's your innocent worries for this man that have you overreacting. For this man, and the others whose medical files you've been hiding. I have to protect my discovery. These people owe me their life, but the world isn't ready yet. It will be, in time. I will not let you do this. You disappoint me, Marie, but I still have hope you'll one day share my point of view. In the meantime, take care of your own patients and try not to forget who you're dealing with. Was that a threat? What did he mean? It was a warning. Dr. Fuller is this institution's founder and one of our profession's most influential voices. My word is of no weight against his. If I continue to protest, I will only ruin my reputation and career. It's scandalous. Can't we do anything? Is there no evidence of his crimes? Oh, that evidence exists. I'm sure of it. I need to find the missing medical files. And where would you find those? In his office? What if you get caught? I'd rather not think about that. I'm counting on your discretion. Of course, Doctor. You can count on me. I'll keep Mum. An unknown medicine. Judging by the other ones, it causes heavy side effects. This place draws you in and never lets you go. The answers must be hidden in Fuller's office. Everybody says it. She's a witch, an old hag. I didn't make this up. And I'm the one who pays. What a pest. It's so unfair. It's temperamental, if I understand correctly. the schedule she's alone in the bathroom again and she still says nothing to that old witch Don. chronic insomnia oh, listen to the way like half the island do naughty girl <laughs> and the answers hay fever what's he doing here doctor please uh, my chest oh his perfusion of a semi-physiological solution doesn't seem to work. He's undergoing a ventricular fibrillation. Nurse? Deborah? Come and help me, please. His potassium level is too high. Replace it with 2% glucose solution with insulin, calcium, and sodium bicarbonate. I'll tend to it right away. Thank you. He's in your hands. <laughs> He broke his back in an accident down by the docks. Ah, 
whaling station. What's wrong with me? What are you talking about? Uh, doctor, is that you? Yes, it's Dr. Colden. Tell me what happened. It's the old whaling station. See? What did you see there? Nothing. Nothing at all. The floor was all rotten and I fell straight through. And that's how you broke your back? Perhaps. No idea. Passed out. I'll just sleep a bit more. <laughs> Mrs. Sanders? Why did nobody tell me about her admission? She recently came back from the surgical block. She's stable. Given her file, a nephrectomy would have been inevitable. But Fuller was able to save her kidney. What is the boiler room key doing here? The key to the boiler room. Not where I expected to find it. The key to the boiler room. Not where I expected to find it. Dr. Colden? Another insomniac. I should find the cause for such a widespread trouble. Dr. Colden, here you are at last. This patient was again brought up to the psychiatric wing. We've been following the treatment you prescribed, but the dyskusia persists and he's lost a great deal of weight. We haven't been able to move him. The stress makes him hyperallergic. Sir, I am going to examine you. Do you understand? Inject him with a dose of pentobarbital, intramuscular, so that I can conduct the clinical examination. He bit his lips so much, they're still bleeding. White froth, evidently because of such drooling. His binds left bloody wounds. So, doctor, what should we do with this patient? Those basement brutes tied him up too tight and now he's hurt. I keep trying to heal his wounds, but he reopens them. Do you have a diploma as a nurse? Excuse me? So take care of this man. Gentlemen, may I help you? We're waiting on news regarding our mother, Maureen Harding. She came in with a kidney problem, but we haven't heard anything since. I've tended to her, and I have good news. Her blood analysis is reassuring. Her kidneys are as new. Are you talking about the same person? This is miraculous. She's still recovering, but you may speak to her upon her awakening. Oh, thank you so much, Doctor. We'll wait for her to wake up. We've been here since this morning, so it won't make a difference. <laughs> oh. 
Watch out for the water, Doctor. Everybody says it. She's a witch, an old hag. Have little time for you, Doctor. You'll find out that it's not only the doctors who have things to do. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Dr. Colden. Mrs. Donovan. Nobody goes into Dr. Fuller's office. But rest assured, I'll tell him you came by. That won't be necessary. Thank you. I will tell him, nonetheless. Let's hope I can go through the administration office. I don't have any business in the boiler room. The operating room is never accessible after an operation. This man, Edward Pierce, his file is incomplete. What did Fuller do to him? In theory, this is where we hang the key to the boiler room. Dr. Fuller always keeps his key with him. It's a quiet little town. Days go by, steady as ever. I wanted more for myself, but... There's no way I'm leaving until I find what Fuller is hiding. I don't get why they have us waiting so long. Almost no patience. Where did my fiancé go? I hope those nutcases will stop burdening her with work. Sorry, but nobody can take anything until I finish the inventory. Please, the fewer interruptions there are, the f Ethan. Marie, I... What are you doing here? I'm waiting for my medication, of course. Why? You're not here for treatment, right? Am I so obvious? <laughs> Only to me. I know you worry about me. I trust you. I'm happy to see you. Me too, Ethan. Is that all? Well, there might be something else. I'm not sure. Tell me. I have nightmares. They keep me awake every night. It seems stupid, I know, but they're terrible. Actually, you're not the only one. No. No one has ever seen the things I see. It's like I'm turning mad. So many people have this affliction. It's like an epidemic. Do you think it might be related to Fuller's work? I don't know yet, but I will figure all this out. Everyone in Darkwater is suffering from nightmares. Really? We don't have any medication left. Oh. There's no excuse then. 
I should let you work. Take care, Ethan. You too, Marie. The key to the boiler room. Not where I expected to find it. Doses prescribed by Fuller are far too high. We're running out of this medicine. I know, Doctor. We sent the purchase order, though, and Mrs. Donovan refused it. Once again. Can't you do anything? Donovan takes her instructions directly from Dr. Fuller. I'm afraid I can do nothing about it for the moment. We've been waiting to be restocked for weeks. The door to the boiler room is locked. This up. It's temperamental. And I'm the one if who I pays. understand correctly. What a pest. It's so unfair. Elizabeth? You alright? Why is this room in such a state? Because, as always, I'm cleaning it by myself. And the water was once again shut off this morning. I had to bother Mrs. Donovan again, giving her a new excuse to belittle me. Do you really need Mrs. Donovan to open a valve? Why not ask the janitor? I can't make these decisions without her approval. Imagine if there were a leak. Anyhow, the boiler room is locked half the time. So every time the water gets shut off, I have to go and endure her reproach until she's settled the problem. I see. Courage, Elizabeth. Thank you, Doctor. The door to the boiler room is locked. Where did I see that key? Ah, oh, yes. The office in Block B. The key to the boiler room. All I have to do is shut off the water and hope Donovan takes the bait. I can't shut this with my bare hands. I need a tool.
The operating room is never accessible after an operation. Where did my fiancé go? I hope those nutcases will stop burdening her with work. Is everything all right, Ethan? Yeah, I just... I will work until... Oh. All right. I don't get why they have us waiting so long. Almost no patients here. It's a quiet little town. Days go by, steady as ever. I wanted more for myself, but... Just sleep a bit. Everybody says it. She's a witch, an old hag. I didn't make this up. And I'm the one who pays. What a pest. It's so unfair. I feel guilty about Elizabeth, but I need the diversion. Dr. Colden, might there be a problem with the water? I was about to mention it. It seems it's been cut off yet again. I can't take this, Marie. I feel I'm gonna burst. It's not your fault if we have defective plumbing. And yet, I'm the one who gets punished because I'm gonna have to square off with that annoying old witch. Courage, Elizabeth. Here we go. And hold your tongue this time. Oh. 
it's not my fault. Nothing is ever your fault. I told you to control the flow. Even if I know it's not your strong point. I've apologized a thousand times. I haven't counted that many, but then unlike you, I don't have time to keep track. Please, Mrs. Donovan. I'm grateful to you for having kept me on despite that incident. I just need the water to be put back on. Otherwise, the bathroom will quickly become a nest of germs. Oh, very well. I'll finish what I'm doing, and then I'll fix your blunders once more. Thank you, ma'am. At last. The missing files must be hidden here. Something is wrong with these masts. It's some sort of puzzle. I've unlocked something. Patient files. I've... Was right. Conclusions, session number 17. Patient, Sarah Hawkins. The patient appears to have finally accepted the illusory nature of what she calls the mythos. It goes without saying that these peculiar delusions are the price that comes with her exceptional gifts. Why does Dr. Fuller write psychological reports about Sarah Hawkins? At first, I presumed that her blood was the key. But I found nothing to explain Mrs. Hawkins' abilities. The poor souls downstairs are not Fuller's only subjects. Then James came. I'm right that Charles was keeping secrets from him. I presume that he will try to break into the basement sooner or later. I am prepared. Hawkins, Fitzroy and Fuller. What is the connection between these three? It's fortunate that I had the presence of mind to set the mall in the basement. When all the fuss about the Hawkins incident finally comes to an end, I will dispose of her belongings. In the meantime, they must remain hidden in plain sight. Is Ethan on medication? Of course, Sarah Hawkins is the connection. This finger belonged to a woman. Why keep it here? I must go back to the basement. I should go another way.
The operating room is never accessible after an operation. That's the Marie that I know. I knew I could count on your scientific curiosity. It's time to show you what you were so eager to discover. If you're gonna shoot me, at least have the decency to look me in the eyes. Turn around. Slowly. Talk, filthy thief! Oh, I swear I'll shoot! Take a minute to look around. Everything points to Charles Hawkins. He's dead! No. He was here for a very specific item. Oh, no. The book. Why was it in the safe? Have you read it? Answer the question. How foolish of you. Now you won't be able to escape his will. What did it show you? She went into Fuller's office. She was looking for Sarah Hawkins' corpse. Sarah Hawkins, you say? Let's go back to the start, shall we? Whose life did the Necronomicon choose to show you? Dr. Colden. She was at the Riverside Institute. She's in danger. I have to go. Wait. No one knows the occult better than me. You might need my help. All right, all right. I might need you after all. Perfect. Let's meet later at the Hawkins Mansion. Now go! Rescue the Doctor! Thank you, Drake.
I pray that Colden is really here and alive. <laughs>